A few weeks ago, someone from a company called Nero reached out to me about their new video upscaler. They gave me an activation code so I could check the software out and let all of my viewers know what I thought about it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to cover what Nero Video Upscaler is and how it works. I'm going to compare it to its main competition, the industry standard Topaz Video Upscaler. And then I'm going to give you my overall assessment of who I think this product is best for. So let's get started. No clickbait in that thumbnail. Nero is in fact a video upscaler. And like a lot of the video upscalers I've looked at in the past, this one utilizes GAN models to upscale any low resolution footage you feed into it. And that's good news because GAN models run well locally on consumer grade GPUs. If you can call the 5090 I'll be using today consumer grade. I guess I did order it from Walmart. The main thing to take away is that Nero Video Upscaler runs locally on your machine. So once you purchase the Perpetual Forever license, you don't have to pay anyone when upscaling outside of the electric company. In addition to upscaling, it's capable of doing frame interpolation. So you can take a 24 frame a second video and turn it into a 120 frame a second video or turn a regular speed video into a super slow-mo speed video. Installation is more or less straightforward, though it does insist on installing an additional piece of software called Nero Start. Judging by the looks of its interface, it's a hub for all manner of file conversion and encoding software that Nero obviously makes. Even if it is common these days, I don't love bonus bloatware. I don't like installing things to install things. Nero Video Upscaler's interface is very straightforward. Upon launching, you only have two options. To record via something called Nero Recode Stick, which I know absolutely nothing about, or to import a video, which I know lots of things about. Once you select a video, it'll take a few seconds to load and then you are presented with the main Nero interface. To compare input to output, you can select side by side or swipe view on the bottom left hand side, and to the right of that, select from several preview duration options, which is very nice to see. With both of these, you can get a look at the upscale you are getting yourself into before you send it off. In the column on the right, you'll see your main upscaling options. The first of those being which GAN model you would like to use. All of these models ran reasonably quickly on my 5090, but I'm going to cover what I thought of the various models outputs a little bit later on. Below that, you can select various different sizes to upscale too. But I would note there is no custom option, which I thought was unfortunate. What if you really need an upscale that is exactly 2000 pixels across? Below that, you can select your desired frame rate, which I always keep at 30. I always kept the AI frame interpolation toggle on, though it appears that is only required if you want to create a slow motion version of your footage at its current frame rate. I found that a bit confusing. Speaking of confusing, the scene detection toggle was kind of a mystery. Turns out that's for video clips that have multiple edits within them. I can certainly see how an edit would interfere with frame interpolation, so the addition of that feature seems like a pretty good idea. Highly exaggerated frame interpolation, say taking 24 frames a second to 120 frames a second, is a pretty niche activity in its own right. So I'm not going to be delving too deep into it today. But I will show an example later on in case that's a feature set that you were really interested in. In addition, frame interpolation doesn't translate very well visually to YouTube. Conversely, if you're a small YouTube channel, likes definitely translate. More than almost any metric I could juice on my own. There's also some audio post-processing available for when you slow down footage, but I would recommend doing that in an external software that's devoted to audio files, so I'm not even going to test that feature. There's an input at the bottom where you can select the file path you'd like your output to be saved to, and then there's the Upscale Now button, which will send your current scene into the Upscale queue. The settings are pretty limited, so we'll cover them quickly. The thing you should be most concerned with here is enabling hardware acceleration, assuming you have a decent graphics card. I would recommend checking the Keep Previous Settings for New Job toggle. That way, if you bring in similar footage, Nero will try and apply the same settings that you used on your last upscale. But do check the settings every time, as that doesn't always work and sometimes they reset. There are some additional settings in Export Options, which will be right above the file path. This is where you choose your bitrate. I would always recommend high. Your encoder, H264 or 5, and you need to select your graphics card manually here to make sure hardware encoding works as intended. Keep an eye on your generations. If they seem to be going slowly, non-GPU software encoding has probably toggled on somehow. That happened to me a couple of times. 
There's one more set of adjustments you can make in the appropriately titled Adjustments tab at the top right. These are pretty basic, and you'll see them in almost any editing or compositing software anyone's ever made. You could adjust these if you'd like, but I recommend not baking adjustments into your upscale, as you can do that elsewhere after the upscale is done. This is all pretty simple and straightforward, which I think can be great for folks that are new to AI or upscaling. You're not going to get overwhelmed with choices and information. Hit upscale and it'll send the task to the upscale job list. This is essentially your cue for everything you're currently upscaling. While it's computing, you can import more videos and adjust their upscale settings before sending them back to this same job queue. Nero refers to this as batch processing, but I disagree with that naming convention here. To me, batch processing is when you can import multiple videos at once, apply the same upscaling to all of them, and export them in an automated fashion. That just isn't available here, and you have to manually import every single video you want an upscale on. In the job list, you can click on the pencil icon to edit settings and rerun any upscale that is already completed. Though keep in mind that if you edit something that's still in queue, it will overwrite the previous settings and run the new settings instead. The folder icon will open the completed upscale in whatever location you saved it to, and the trash can will eliminate the video from the job list entirely. Speaking of file saving, this was my first major issue with Nero Video Upscaler. No matter what settings you select or what model you choose, all the outputs save as their original name plus underscore VSR export. I could not find a way to change this name or output anything other than the original file name plus that standard post script. If you're dealing with a lot of files or changing a lot of settings or trying a lot of different models, that could get really frustrating. I was using additional placeholding folders. I used Windows Power Toys File Management Renamer. It was not a great feeling and it seems like something they could sort out. But as it stands, you're stuck with the clunky naming. Okay, so how good is the upscaling? First, let's take a look at the models that are available. The fast model is certainly the fastest, but I found the output to be a bit grainy. And being that these are all GAN models, the additional speed is hard to notice. The non-fast models generate really quickly, with the exception of the versatile model. That one takes a bit longer. I'm not sure the time is worth it though, because the result always looked pretty much the same as the realistic model. The realistic model consistently gave me the best output, and that's why I'm going to recommend you use it as your default model for all types of footage. If you are getting results you aren't happy with, you can try models like animation or face enhancement for those types of scenes, or possibly even give Versatile a go. But I generally found that realistic gave the best outcome. Unless otherwise noted, all of the footage you are looking at today with the Nero tag is upscaled in the realistic model. This is similar to Topaz, where I just spam the Raya button and only make adjustments if the outcome isn't to my liking. Overall, I think Nero Video Upscaler with its realistic model does a solid job of upscaling most footage, especially for my typical use case of upscaling videos generated in AI. Animated footage looks quite nice once upscaled, and if that's your only use case, Nero Video Upscaler might make a solid budget alternative to things like Topaz. Nero also did a solid job with more realistic scenes, though I did note areas where Topaz's Rhea model did a better job. For example, here you can see the eyes in the Nero shot are pretty wobbly, and while not perfect in Rhea, they are clearly more coherent. Also, if we look at Feathercat, realistic versus Rhea, Topaz is clearly coming up with a sharper result. Compared side by side, the Nero outputs always seem to be a touch softer. Don't get me wrong though, Nero versus non-upscaled footage is night and day, and it is clearly doing what it says on the tin. Upscaling. While we are still on the topic of AI-generated video, let's take a quick look at frame interpolation in the way it is normally studied in more academic settings, via George Washington riding a dinosaur. YouTube is not a great place to demonstrate 120 frame per second video, being that it caps at 60. That's why I time-stretched this interpolated footage in order to get a slow-motion look at the job both upscalers did. Overall, I think both did a solid job, with Nero possibly getting a slight edge in this particular test. If you are especially interested in frame interpolation, 
installation, let me know in the comments below as I rarely utilize it, so my experience in testing is fairly limited. More often than not, I feel like I'm evaluating who made the better blurry mess when things are pushed this far. I mainly use interpolation if I want to slightly change the pace of a shot or match 24 frame per second generations to my usual 30 frame per second output. One thing that was requested in the comments of my last upscaling video was to explore some archival footage upscaling. I grabbed some old public domain footage from the Prelinger archives. There'll be a link below if you're interested in some archival testing of your own. I picked one film example and one interlaced video example and set to work testing. The video footage, an advertisement for a folding television from 1959, immediately brought to light a deficiency present in Nero Video Upscaler. It simply doesn't have a deinterlacing function. I should probably explain what that is, as not everyone watching is a thousand years old like myself. Vast eons ago, television video footage was recorded in interlaced lines on alternating frames, where only half of the frame was ever recorded or transmitted every split second. This became problematic when full-frame progressive video started to become more common, as interlaced frames played on a progressive screen tended to flicker and just look terrible. The solution became known as deinterlacing. And I can tell you from experience, it was a nightmare to do, and on a good day, it came out looking like garbage. Modern AI-based deinterlacing is miles better hands down. No human can do what AI deinterlacing can do. These old pre-AI deinterlacing jobs are often referred to as interlaced progressive, and they exhibit a characteristic sawtooth pattern in areas of contrast, as seen here in the footage I selected. Like I said, Nero just doesn't have a solution for this. It's strictly an upscaler. And when you upscale undeinterlaced footage, the result is a mess. And you can see it here. Topaz video, on the other hand, includes dedicated deinterlacing for both interlaced and interlaced progressive sources. I use Topaz to correct the interlaced footage and then fed the result into both programs upscalers. Neither did a particularly good job as this old television footage is fairly low resolution and pretty blurry and there was only so much a GAN model could do. I'll talk more about solutions for that in a little bit. For archival film footage like this footage from the 1939 World's Fair in New York, both the Topaz and Nero upscalers did a pretty reasonable job, but it would be hard to call either outcome perfect. Certainly better, but no one's going to confuse this for IMAX. Let's talk about value and my overall assessment of Nero Video Upscaler in comparison to its well-established competition, Topaz Video. Nero is certainly less expensive at $195 rather than $300, although currently it appears to be on sale for $137. Nero has been out about a year, but I've only known about it for about a month. So for all I know, this is one of those permanent sale prices. At the listed price of $195, I would recommend spending $100 more and just getting Topaz. It's the industry standard, it's more feature complete, and it just feels more functional in terms of handling a lot of files. Topaz just has more tool maturity. Almost everything can be adjusted in some way. I've hardly even touched the conversion to high dynamic range or the stabilization options. One of my backburner projects is a multi-part complete Topaz guide, because this forever licensed software has tons of features most people never even know about given the use case they have currently. Did you even know you can reduce motion blur in Topaz? Have you even ever scrolled down that far? If you would be interested in a multi-part series on Topaz where I explore and explain everything I can find Mind, let me know in the comments below. As for Nero, at the reduced price of around $137, the assessment is a little more difficult. Pound for pound, Topaz is a more complete software, but $300 might be more than many people want to drop, even for a permanent license. Nero does have an additional option, to simply pay for a single year of an activated license. At 60 bucks, this might be one of the more attractive looks Nero has, as it would allow someone who isn't sure how much use they would get out of an upscaler to try one, inexpensively, for a whole year. Maybe you have an old pile of archival film footage you would like to get some kind of an upscale on, but aren't interested in paying $300 for a permanent license to a software you might only use for one project. In that case, Nero might be a good option for you. I get the sense that Nero, while a newcomer, is still being developed and more advanced models could be released in the months ahead. I wouldn't recommend something based on something that could happen, but for 60 bucks I suppose I've taken bigger gambles. That being said, Nero doesn't exist in a vacuum. Topaz is out there and as far as I know has the only locally run diffusion upscaling model available anywhere in Starlight Mini. 
We've looked at this World's Fair footage a good bit now, but take a look at what Starlight Mini, run locally on my 5090, was able to do with it in about two hours. This diffusion upscaling is a completely different world of quality. While it might not show up when upscaling sharper footage, it turns things like old television commercials from smeary gunk into something halfway presentable. I would say Nero is for anyone looking for simple, reasonably high quality local upscaling at a somewhat reduced price. But I'm definitely going to keep an eye on Nero in the future, as I like what I've seen so far. Let me know in the comments if the price segment Nero currently occupies would be right for you or your use case. I understand that not everyone is like me, upscaling hundreds of clips a week, so maybe 60 bucks a year to occasionally use an upscaler is a pretty good deal. There are social media links below. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or have anything else you would like to see tested. That goes for any companies as well, if you have any products you would like me to take a look at. This is still a very new channel. Every like, every share, every sub helps me more than you could ever know. I hope this quick look at Nero Video Upscaler armed you with some information you can use when you're trying to decide what software is right for you. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.